All right, here we have the longest running produced shotgun ever made. That's still in production to this day. It's an Ithaca Model 37, and this one slam fires. Let's have some fun. Woo Welcome to This Old Gun. I'm Russell from Cape Gunworks. Today we're going to be looking at an Ithaca Model 37. This specific model is the 37 Featherlight. And they produced these guns in 1937 is when they started to come out. And it is still in production today. It is the longest running shotgun that is still produced to this day. And I believe that's a testament to how well designed it is. So around the early 30s, the biggest shotgun in the competition in the gun industry was the Winchester Model 12. And it's still, in, to this day, I consider a very excellent shotgun. But Ithaca saw this and decided, we need to compete against that. We need to, we need to make something for the market that is really going to put a nick in Winchester's uh, competition, because there was nothing beating that shotgun. So they noticed that a small patent by John Browning, a Remington Model 1917 design, was set to expire. So what they did was they said, that's actually a pretty good design. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that and tweak it a little bit. So what they did is they kind of made it a little more cost effective. They did some things with the ejection system, I believe, and possibly the firing pin. And they made it a little bit cheaper than the 1917. So this shotgun is a lot of fun to shoot. It's my favorite shotgun next to the Winchester shotguns. And we're going to go out to the range now, and I'm going to show you just how this gun works and just how much fun it is. Some of these guns are often impartial or partial to federal. They get a little finicky about other shells. That's only some Ithacas though, not all of them. And especially the Featherlight and the Deer Slayer guns will have this really beautiful inscribing, often of some ducks flying across a lake, which is rather common. I've seen a lot of Ithacas, most Ithacas. Uh, that aren't like police magnums or riot guns chambered, uh, excuse me, engraved with that on the receiver. So let's have a little more fun here. And we're out. That's all the ammo I have for this gun. Not much left of the, of the target. <laughs> It was pretty controllable buckshot. All my pellets right in the middle. And wad, 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 wad. <laughs> so buckshot is pretty effective at the right distances, at the right loads, with the right loads, and a trusty weapon. It'll definitely get the job done. So this gun had a little bit of a tough start, mainly because the depression was starting to come on and it was possibly the worst time to introduce a supporting arm into the, into the commercial market because nobody could afford guns, let alone much of anything else. Brother, can you spare a dime? So this gun took a little while to take off, but when it did take off, it took off like wildfire. And not only was it great in the commercial sporting market, but it was great in the military slash police market. There were a lot of police officers and police forces that next to Remington 870s were packing Ithaca Model 37s for the longest time. And there were a couple of Ithaca Model 37 trench guns, especially used in Vietnam. And there's actually a reproduction made by Inland Manufacturing of the M37 trench gun that they still make to this day. So if you want to come down and check out this beautiful example of an Ithaca Model 37, come on down to Cape Gunworks and check it out. I'd love to show it to you. If you have a Model 37 you'd like to take a look at, because there were tons of variants of this gun, I'd love to check it out, tell you about it, possibly give you an appraisal on it. And don't forget to go to capegunworks.com forward slash TOG to check out some of my merch and some previous episodes. I'm Russell from Cape Gunworks. I'll see you around.